threats of violence for violence ahead of Edo State governorship election and will presidential directive ease the plight of NDDC scholars abroad? This is Plus Politics and I am Felicity Ezewike. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. The scene in Edo State takes a new turn. As the former national chairman of the All Progressive Congress APC, Adam Sushomale, has said that the party would not fold its arms and watch Governor Godwin, Godwin Obaseki and the People's Democratic Party violently rig the upcoming governorship election, saying we will meet violence with violence. And on Sunday, Governor Basaki warned those intent on disrupting public peace, stating that he is determined to maintain order and protect lives and property. Joining us to discuss this is Chris Nahikari, the Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party in Edo State. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having me. We also have Mr. Henry Idabong, the former Minister of Justice in Edo State. A pleasure to have you join us on the program. Good evening and thanks for having me. You just promoted me to Minister. I was Commissioner, not Minister. Commissioner of Justice. My apologies. Well, you will, You who knows? You might just be the next Minister of Justice. <laughs> all right all right let's start this conversation with you now the two major parties are making subtle threats of violence what worries you about this kind of rhetoric as campaign intensifies well i am uh, i am worried it's an unfortunate development it is uh, not we are known for in a do but the records must be set straight even before Godwin Obasaki moved to the PDP, which is just about five weeks ago, he has had a long history of violence on APC members when he was in APC. Starting from the 1st of May 2019, he has had his uh, talks, beat up fellow party members. There is the popular case of Khalid in Molere, you know, one local government who was organizing an EPM meeting he was a butcher, almost like a, like a, like a cow in an abattoir. Is this is directly. Let's let's. Um, uh, the, the question is, what worries you about the violence? Because yes. it, are you are you do you have evidence to say that this man actually instigated this violence? Yes, yes. Before I go to what worries me, we have to trace the historiography. We have to look at it. I, I am speaking to you now. I survived an assassination attempt by people who drove in government vehicle on the 30th of January 2020. They, I mean, 2020. They left my office with 77 bullet holes. That's me talking to you. So there's been this history of violence, which has nothing to do with the PDP because it's barely six weeks old in the PDP. I am worried because no life of any Edo citizen is worth the office of the governor. Office of the governor is a, a governor is at best a steward to the people, is a servant to the people. And nobody needs to be killed or nobody's blood needs to be shared for a person to become governor. Uh, if there's one a, thing that you must continue to remember, a quick and commend former President Jonathan Ford, it is his popular saying that the presidency of Nigeria is not worth the blood of any Nigerian citizen. So I want to appeal to Governor Godilo Basaki. I'm not even saying PDP now, because I've not seen any act of violence from the PDP, for Governor Basaki to realize that election is the contestation of ideas. He's seeking for the people's votes. And not to have armed talk. Let, let, let me interject, Mr. Idahabong. Are you um, separating the two at this moment? Because as it stands, there is a campaign. The party is with, I mean, the party and the candidate are seen as the same thing because without the party, the candidate can come. So are you separating the party and the man in this instance before I go on to uh, Mr. Nahikare? 
what I'm, what I'm saying is, before he joined PDP, even while he was in APC, there were serial and various acts of violence directly traceable to, his, uh, to, to him. So he has just been in PDP for six weeks. The only act of violence that has been perpetrated, to my knowledge, since he joined PDP, was the shooting at the palace of the Oba of Benin. All right. And we know, we, we, know, we know those who perpetrated it. They are people who left with him from APC to PDP. So for now, I am not prepared to accuse the PDP yet. Okay. I am putting all the fault and the blame on the, on the governor's uh, uh, doorstep. Okay, let, let, that clarification was needed so our viewers can get a perspective of um, where you're coming from. Um, Mr. Naikare, my question is, you already know what the conversation is about. Violence, violence, boat threats coming. Um, this is sitting well with a lot of persons. Is this the kind of rhetoric we're going to be looking forward to as the campaign intensifies, do you think? I think we have to first of all, put the right perspective. Although PDP and its candidate, Governor Baseki, are the victims of APC's violence. As a member of APC, Governor Baseki was bullied, was intimidated, was threatened, and then he had to leave that house of commotion to come to the safety and the comfort of the PDP umbrella. And um, my brother over there is talking about putting the blame on Obaseki without an iota of evidence. As a former attorney general, I'm disappointed that he has to come on national television to make such uh, allegations against our governor. We are not amused and we find it uh, frivolous for him to talk about things along those lines. But for the issue of violence, we all are aware that APC has a, a lots of factions within, the, within themselves. It's broken up to factions and all fighting for supremacy. That is what has led them to the violence they experienced when Governor Basaki was there and the violence they are still planning to perpetrate now while the election is on. They are looking for a fall guy in the governor and we reject it and it's unacceptable to Edo people. The governor is only interested in developing Edo states, reforming the pensions, reforming the pensions, judiciary, Education and all the things that make life better. All for the, all, Mr. Naikari, all you are saying is well and good, but there are, I mean, it's not the hearsay. This is something we saw on camera him saying the same thing subtle threats of violence, same thing with Oshamale. And I'm asking you, is this the kind of rhetoric we will see coming forward? Because a lot of persons are concerned, are we going to be focusing on who will outsmart the other violently or what the agenda is going to be for the people? No, that's what I'm saying. They're trying to distract the attention of, uh, of this campaign. The governor was not threatening violence. All the governor was saying is that let there be peace. It was at the stadium the day he flagged off and said, and he advised and admonished PDP youths and membership. Do not retaliate if you are attacked. This is the government. This is we can quote the governor. This is what he said. And he also said recently, a few days ago, that he and the deputy governor are the ones with immunity and they're the ones that have the power to protect Edo people. And that if anybody is seen to be perpetrating violence, attacking or destroying PDP cars or vehicles or property because they have the stickers on it, we will make sure the full weight of the law is brought upon that person. There is All no right. way you can quote the governor, excuse me, not, there's no way you can quote the governor of saying we will mark violence with violence. Instead, we have videos of the APC candidates uh, empowering and telling his uh, lions and tigers. Mr. Laker, I actually watched the video. I actually watched the video. People. But let, let's not, let's not uh, overflow the issue. But I actually watched the video and I heard him say clearly that um, nobody has a monopoly of violence and same thing that we're exactly. talking about but it's important that we clear the air and you've made efforts to do that in some of the videos let's look at other pertinent issues on this matter in some of the videos one can hear the youths in the background reassuring their principle of their support to do what is needed the conversation about the youths being used during election persists even today what are we missing do you see that playing out again in this election no, Edo State has been 
a very peaceful state where we do not perpetrate for uh, violent during elections. You can go, you see, this is the culture of APC. Look at what happened in Bayelsa, look at what happened in Kogi. PDP is a gentle party with gentle, responsible men and women. The youth of the state, unfortunately, in the last 10 and a half, 12 years, they grew up under an APC government that encouraged and built up thugs. You know, and then they give the pressure that it's better to be a thug and you'll be rewarded for being a thug. What Obaseki is trying to do is to reset those states for them to, for the youth to realize that education is the cornerstone of development and growth. That is what is, right. and that is what the resistance is getting up from APC and the thugs. That thuggery pays, but Obaseki is saying thuggery does not pay. Okay, let's, let's bring back Mr. Idabong uh, into the conversation. Um, what should the conversation be during this campaign period away from the violence? What should Edo people be more concerned about as we proceed uh, in this process? Okay, uh, please just give me a minute to, uh, to express my disappointment at my brother and friend, Neikari. I expected him to respond as a statesman, which is in Edo, but he decided to be partisan and be protecting his uh, uh, candidate and his party. Uh, Neikare doesn't know Obaseki. He's barely six weeks old. We know Obaseki for eight years. I worked directly with Obaseki for eight years and during his first campaign. Neikare doesn't know him, apart from seeing him on television. So I'm disappointed that uh, he's taking a very partisan and narrow look on this issue. We are uh, talking is about also, our people. He's entitled okay, to his now, opinion, what as are you. What are those people should be expecting? And those people will want to know from God in Obaseki what he has done this past four years. He made promises. I joined him to make the promises. The Ikari wasn't there 2016 with Obaseki. I joined him to make promises that we will provide 200,000 jobs in four years. We want to know with verifiable uh, facts and figures how many of those jobs have been generated. And those people want to know, he promised that there will be a seaport at Gele, Gele. We want to know whether ships are already uh, betting at Gele, Gele now. He promised an industrial hub at Olubu, he brought the vice president, Professor Yebi Osibajo, to do the groundbreaking ceremony. We want to know what is happening there now. He turned the school where he did his A-level lectures, ICE, to an ICT hub. He said Microsoft, Amazon, they are there. It is the new Silicon Valley in Edo State in Nigeria. We want to know what is coming out of there. He promised to build one S-Center per local government. We have the two local governments. We want to know how many are built. He promised to build one stadium for local government. We want to know how many he has built. These are the issues. He's an incumbent governor. I mean, he's an incumbent governor. He needs to tell us what he has done in order to, um, to justify asking for a second term. He promised roles. I challenged Christian Naikari. For four years, the man was in our party. We elected him. He has done three roles in Benin. Three major roles. Let me qualify the roles with major. The number one is the Iriri road. The number two is a uh, uh, lucky way. Number three is I uh, TV road, the Heisman Road. The fourth one, uh, Kenwa Road, has been abandoned. No any other major road has been done. What you have are lanes and avenues in the GROA, majorly done through C4 project, which is the World Bank project, and then the NDDC. So what uh, we have our markets, virtually all the major markets in Berlin have been burnt. We don't have fire uh, service and uh, firefighting uh, uh, the vehicles. He inherited some from the previous administration. He couldn't maintain them. He promised the market women was going to give them a hundred million to recapitalize their businesses. He has not given them a cover. This guy just talk and talk and talk and does nothing. And for us in the APC, it was good riddance to bad rubbish. And like you said that uh, you, you were saying to Chris, we saw him come on television to say that uh, they are threatening us with violence. How can they do that when I have you? He was addressing his thoughts. Mr. Mr. Idaho, I mean, before, before I move over to Mr. Naikari, because the thing is, when, let me just ask the question. If Obasaki hasn't moved from the APC to the PDP, will you be saying what you are saying, that he didn't perform? Okay. Uh, maybe you don't know my pedigree. Uh, let me tell you this. On May 1st, 2019, he had not moved to PD, uh, PDP. Myself and Honorable Santino Nosaige, we turned up APC Patriots. We formed an organization called EPM, Edo People's Movement in Edo State, with two cardinal objectives. The first objective 
was to uh, 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 was to reactivate the forces of the party in the state, and the second objective was to shop for a suitable alternative to Governor Basaki. We have been highlighting its failure as governor since 1st of May 2019. So I didn't start today. Look at it from, from both the electronic and the print media. You will see there. We've been saying this before he left for the PDP. Eventually, it was EPM that succeeded in uh, showing him the exit door in the, in the PC. And we did that because we realized that he promised so much and he has delivered so little. Go to Benin when it rains. People are afraid to sleep in their houses. So right. are taking over the place. Let's in bring Mr. Yeah, Nahikari. Um, you, you've said a thing. lot. In my word, we are good. Was one in the local government area. Mr. Idabo. In 2016, I took him to my ward. He I promised think... he was going to tie the major road in my ward and even name the road Western Bypass. Um, Chris, there are no the road. I want to move. Go there now. All right, let, let's possible. allow Chris some talk time as well. Chris, I want you to react to some of the key things he said about, you know, the work that Obaseki is doing in a do state. You see, it's easy to come out on television to say he hasn't done anything. But I'm glad he admitted that he has done at least four major roads. And he was really talking about Benin City. There are 18 local governments in those state. And Governor Baseki has touched every local government with major, major roads. He did not deny that fact. He just talked about four roads in Benin City. Even the road leading to the house and by the house of, its, uh, of the APC candidate today was fixed by Governor Obaseki. So that's just for, that's for roads alone. Obaseki has done so much. He talked about uh, this, uh, uh, this sports stadium, uh, hospitals, which there is no sector that has not been touched. You mentioned Gile Gile. I want, I want to challenge him to go to Gile Gile, to go to the road leading to Gile Gile and see the work that is taking place there. This cannot be done in four years. It's a work in progress. He made promises in 2016 when he was coming in, and I'm one of those that criticized him that he cannot achieve those promises, especially, especially the 200,000 jobs. But today, 185,000 jobs have been created by his, created by his, uh, by what he has put on ground. At least 185,000, at least are verifiable. He can come to government house or go to the industrial hub to take all these things down. 185,000 jobs. Um, the, fa um, the farmers today are all smiling. The farmers today are all smiling because for the first time, farmers in Edo states, farmers in Edo states have been, and their products are being used and taken care of. Mr. Nike, compared more rules. Uh, I, I, I'm sorry to interject, but I, I'm told we have uh, four minutes, so I'm going to split it. I'm going to stay with you for two more minutes, and um, I would like you to use that period to talk about um, what should uh, be the kind of campaign the people of Edo should expect from the PDP so that, you know, they can be able to make up their mind if Obaseki is the candidate they would go with. Oh, this is, I'm really, I'm really pleased that the government went about asking questions about what has been done and what has not, been, has not been done. And this is what we want the campaign to be about because we are going to be so proud to list out every single project the governor has done. There are at least 3,000 projects that are not commissioned yet that have been, that have been done by Governor Basak in the last three and a half years. You know, it's done, the first, there is a sectional building that's completed, Oshama Power Plant, the Model re Refinery, the Ogbe Stadium. In fact, there are so many, and we want this to be the issues of this campaign, not threats of violence from Madame Oshomale or his apology to Edo people for bringing, uh, for talking bad about Pastor Sagi Ezeemu. No, we want Edo people to ask us questions and we will show them, that is what we are doing right now. At the same time, we want APC candidates to show what he has done for Edo people, what he did as Secretary of the Government and as Chief of Staff to the Government in the last for eight years from 1999 to 2007. We will show what the basket has done in three years. Not right. a market, but in every single project. Okay, um, let's go back to Mr. Idabong. You have your two minutes as well. I flipped the question on its head. What should be the kind of campaign that the APC would put up that will help Edo people make the decision of if they are going to go with the APC candidate? 
Okay. Um, uh, Chris Nakar is from the local government. Before he leaves, let me tell the people of Nigeria listening what project that has been done in the local government by Obaseki is none. APC, APC campaign program is very simple. Pastor Sage Zeyamu has uh, a manifesto, which he calls a simple agenda. It starts from uh, security to employment. He has promised to provide uh, security to those people who are plagued by insecurity. Every day there's robbery, there's thuggery, there's uh, falsism, and there's kidnapping in those states. He has promised that he will create uh, the enabling environment and he will develop our infrastructure. He will lead by example. He will create employment. These are the issues. If, as, for example, yesterday he went to the market and assured the market women that they will revive their door fire service and he will create a unit in every major market with a firefighting vehicle and a water reservoir so that they can respond promptly to any fire incident. So Sage Zeyamu is an old and established politician. He has been relating with our people since 1999 to the beginning of this republic. He's not a stranger. He's not a foreigner in Edo land. Obaseki was based in Lagos. He grew up in Lagos. He can't speak our language. He can't sing in our language. He just came from nowhere. And it was imposed on us in 2016. Right, it's Idabon. an action we regret now. We are going to ride the wrong of 2016 in 2020. All right. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. We appreciate your time and the best of luck to your parties. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you very much. I'm not from Mohundi, I'm from Oriomo. And today we have a college of education in Oriomo built by Godwell Baseki. Thank you very much. All right. Have a lovely evening. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, Akwabio mentions two ex-governors as NDDC contract beneficiaries, and of course the directive from the presidency to pay up to the scholars away from our shores. Do stay with us. But first, plus reports. The Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, has warned politicians in Edo State against fomenting violence during the upcoming state governorship elections. Governor Obaseki, while receiving the leadership of the various National Association of Nigerian Students chapters, urged the students to resist any attempt to rig the polls using violence. He said the state government is ready for troublemakers and is prepared to ensure they do not disrupt the polls. Our re-election is a decision between good and evil. It's black and white. We say we don't want Turks, we don't want Agberos, we don't want CDA. So that this place can breathe, so that businesses can come, so that employment can be created for the young ones. Is it a crime? That is what this election is about. It's not about personalities we wanting to go into office and make, no. It is about you, your future. I get sick and tired seeing piles and piles and piles of CVs. We advertise for one position and you have thousands of children, which means that they want to work. They want to do these things for, their, for themselves. But we believe that because government is ours, we are godfathers, we will restrict opportunities, we will restrict privileges to only those we want to. We begin to play God. You will get this, you will get that. Who are you? You cannot, who are you? Are you God? That is the way they've run this country. And we're saying enough is enough. 